All right, so welcome back, everyone. Welcome to part two of this uh, look at the early versions of pre-release versions of Kerbal Space Program. So we've moved to the second public release. This is version 0.8.5. And it was released on the 11th of July 2011. So only a few weeks after the first version, which will attend the first video in this series, which was 0.7.3. Released on the 24th of June. So this was released on the 11th of July 2011. So only a few weeks later. Okay, not a great deal has actually changed. Except some bug fixes. And adding symmetrical attachment in the VAB. So head into the game. We'll take a look around. Okay, so once again. On the Space Centre overview. As you can see, nothing actually changed. It's a little launch pad with the tower. And the VAB, the original VAB. As I mentioned, you can still find this elsewhere on the curbing as an anomaly now. So into the VAB. All right, so what's going on in the VAB? And as always, we start with just a command pod. We have got a new save and retrieval function. So it can save and load craft now. No new parts. We have got an important bug fix. As you can see, we've got no new parts, no decals. And the important bug fix is the physics. The st so in this version, they stiffen the joints up slightly. So these are actually useful now. And we've got symmetry attachment, which isn't going to be much use in the uh, rocket I'm going to be building. But it's nice to have it there on tap, so to say. Okay, so I'm going to put the original booster we used in the previous episode. I'm going to try and get to orbit by attaching some SRBs radially to those first stage tanks. Okay, so this is the uh, booster we tried before in the previous episode. So I've changed the final stage to a liquid booster. So I can throttle it off and on. And I've added an extra third tank, a third tank above each of the first stage engines. This will not get off the pad. So, oh, something else I've forgotten about. Tap and hold down the left mouse uh, tap and hold down the left ALT key, I should say. And left clicking duplicates the parts. And also, you can actually release parts now. With a nice little feature. So now you can just, let's say you make a slight mistake. I want to change, a, a let's say, a part above here. You just take it now and just drop it there. Before in the previous version, the first public release, it will just disappear. So you couldn't really do that. So that helped build things larger, more complicated. So also helps you uh, bug fix, I suppose, in your boosters. Okay, so we've got lateral decouplers. Now, of course, symmetrical attachment doesn't actually really help us here because it only goes on the actual part itself. So unless you want three or four boosters on each tank, which is impossible, it's pretty much useless for us to use that. Okay, so I'm going to attach them as much as I can and try and align them because there's no offset tools still. So we can't slide parts about. So left alt key, left click. We'll try and align these. That bottom part of this radial decoupler needs to go right on that bottom line of the tank. about right I think a little bit out oh okay that helped so I'll try and put my mouse pointer on the lowest yellow line again you got to do this visually mouse pointer on the lowest light yellow line on the tank just like that Okay. There's no nose cones or anything like that yet, which would make it look a little bit better. But that should have more than enough delta V, enough TWR with those SRBs firing to get off the pad at least. So now I need to change and move around. 
So you can't just pick up an entire stage and move it around as you can see. You can't drag it. So you've got to basically try and put your own. Wait a minute, that's the wrong way, you pillock. What am I doing? So all these need to be moved down to the lower stage. So they all fire at once. Okay, so I've sorted the staging out. Took a little bit of time just there. Just deactivate those. Well, this should be okay. They should all fire. The SRB should find the first stage motor should fire. Then we should get the decouplers for the for the uh, SRBs. And there's a missing stage just here. So I have to press the space bar twice for that. It seems to be fine. Okay. Go ahead and save it. We'll head up to the launch pad and see if we can get into orbit. Okay, so here we are. Back at the launch pad for the first time this episode. I'm not entirely sure whether these SRBs are actually aligned properly. So we might get slightly... Slightly unequal thrust. I have no idea what that is, but never mind. Let's just ignore it. Okay, so once again, you can't toggle the SS on and off. Got to hold the F key down again. Okay, so we've got those three tanks. Each of those tanks will activate in threes, obviously. When that's empty, the next ones will activate. And we actually have fuel counts as well. So in the previous episode, in the first public release of KSP, only the SRBs would actually tell you how much fuel was left in them. Now we've got the liquid boosters doing the same thing. So that's good. Okay, so here we go. SS is on, full throttle. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> to make a nice smooth ascent and then circle as nice and low. Okay, we've got about two thirds of the second core stage left. So I'll leave the nose slightly above the horizon. 10 degrees just so I can control where the apoapsis is by thrust I don't want to mess around manoeuvring because it's quite st unstable still phew so yeah we start going the other way I think slightly retro slightly towards sort of the west rather than easterly direction which isn't the best way to actually achieve orbit so I don't think those SRBs are exactly aligned properly.
just on a little bit. If it lets me, good grief, it's bounced all over the place. Might be necessary to give it a little bit of a kick every so often if I see the yet. Uh, that needle coming down a little bit too sharply. So it shouldn't come down very sharply. It shouldn't be climbing very sharply either. So it shouldn't display much of a change in that needle. 2351 or so meters per second. So even on low sensitivity, it's still quite sensitive to controls. Okay, so we're still climbing. We're approaching 100 kilometers now, perhaps. So I'm just hoping that the periapsis is above the atmosphere. That's what the danger can be if you can't see where your uh, apple and periapsis are. The danger is you push your upper axis too high and it brings on the periapsis. Hope that's not what's happened here. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, we're fast approaching 100 kilometers, so we are rapidly accel we are accelerating in climb now. We're really climbing. So hopefully that 80. About 85, 86 kilometers now, periapsis. I'm hoping that's what it is. But we shall have to see. Okay, climate slowing right down now. 172. 172.1. Hundred seventy two point one three four. Hundred seventy two point one three four kilometers. Phew, that took a while. Alright, right, so we'll have to check make sure the periapsis is above the atmosphere. If it is, then we have achieved all, but if not, we'll have to uh well we'll try and see if we can get these three back at least alive. Okay, so here we go. 78.131. So it's 78.131 kilometers at periapsis. Alright, so we'll go straight around to the apoapsis and uh, retrograde burn there to bring the periapsis down. I'm not going to bring it down too rapidly though. I want, it, I want to try and splash down somewhere around this area. Because we can splash on in water, and it's safe to do that than try and land on the actual surface itself, the actual land mass of the planet. Okay. Okay, so approaching our apoapsis on the uh, retrograde marker already, or thereabouts. So I'm going to do a few seconds burn with this stage, and we'll leave this stage attached as well. Just in case. Okay, so a few seconds. Okay, that should be enough. I'm going to leave this stage attached, as I said, just in case I need to modify it. Try and bring down the uh, velocity little bit before deploying the parachute. Hopefully we splash down somewhere where that periapsis was because it was over the ocean. Hopefully we splash down in it.
Okay, successful return from orbit. First orbit. And, yep, they're all three of them are still alive. They all look a bit, sort of, a bit sort of tight-lipped. Okay, I'm going to recover them. Alright, so that flight lasted one hour, 12 minutes and 6 seconds. Highest point was in 72 kilometres or so. And we saw where the periapsis was just, just above 77 kilometres. Alright, that's the end of the uh, second video of this mini-series. Take a look at the uh, pre-release versions, the old versions of KSP. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to click like, it's appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And don't forget to our Discord, Facebook and Twitter. You'll find the link to all those three, three, all three of those platforms on the banner front page of the channel. And if you want to leave a comment or a question, you're more than welcome to do so. Alright, I'll we'll see you in the next, very next video. We'll be looking at the next public release of KSP after the first two. Alright, so once again, thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time. In the meantime, as always, take care. Bye-bye.